Okay, so I have the M5 shades, and when I first got the car, they were nice and tight. And then I went to release them, and oh no, they won't work. How do you get them to work? Well, something's not right. So, what you need to do, I'm going to fix this. First thing you need to do is you need to pull this piece out of the car. And I started looking at it and thought, well, maybe I need to remove the door panel and there's maybe a screw down here or something. That's not the case. The case is, you come at it from way up here in the top. Of course, can't get the lighting to cooperate here. Up in the top here, there's a little clip. So I'm going to go around to the other side because I've already removed that one. Okay. So if you look, there's this metal clip that holds them in, and then they just snap down over this little metal tab right here. So if you reach underneath the plastic piece, I'm going to try and show this, and you want to get underneath this clip and then push it up, like I'm pushing it up. I used a uh, machinist pick here, uh, scribe, and that's how I did it. So I'm going to go over here. And probably because I'm using, trying to do a video, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this work. Uh, if I can get in there and remove this one, let's see how. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I've already got the other one out. I've showed you where you need to go in at. You're coming in from the trailing edge of the door. You're going to bring your machinist pick up from this way. You just have to kind of feel around for it. So when you get everything apart, what you're likely to find is this. This is the side that has the little round piece. And what I found on both of them is this side was pulled out and this was just kind of laying in here like this, okay? And on this end, this is the piece that needs to be captive because there needs to be spring tension maintained on this little piece. It's like a window shade, uh, you know, it's. It's got a little uh, keyway that it's supposed to fit in. So if you found some little black plastic pieces like this, you do not want to throw these away yet. Uh, you may need them to kind of uh, set up the alignment for exactly where this is going to uh, fit in, in the top end of here when you're going to uh, repair it. This is what I'm talking about. So on this one, you can see that a piece of that plastic is still in place and it shows proper alignment of uh, of the window shade. Now I have already wound this one, uh, established the spring tension. I've dropped a small, uh, I dropped a small, you can see this little piece right, where is it, right here, this uh, uh, screwdriver bit I've dropped in there to hold tension on this piece right here so it holds it in place because it is, if I did not have that in there pulling it this way, then this uh, this spring tension wouldn't be maintained and, and it would unravel and then after the repair is done, I, I would be right where I started, only worse. Now what I'm gonna use for this repair is uh, something called uh, Quick Steel, I think is one version. I've got the JB Weld version, I forget what they call it, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a uh, just a small car piece of cardboard. I'm going to cut it out to fit between this little metal, uh, this little gold colored piece of metal and the repair because I don't want that quick steel uh, squishing down into the mechanism here and gumming everything up. And uh, if that happens, then this is totally destroyed. And at over $400 for each one of these, I certainly don't want to ruin them. Now, I'm going to recreate the plastic that should be in this area right here to hold the other side of this where there's you know you see there's nothing up against it nothing holding it in place there so I'm gonna jam some quick steel in there and when it cures it should be a solid repair it should last uh, probably longer than the original now the reason why you need to keep these plastic bits if they fall out I, I got lucky on the passenger side and the plastic more the plastic that was on this side didn't uh, didn't come out so it allowed me to have that piece that I need to maintain the alignment so what you're gonna do with these is you're gonna try and figure out where they came from and pop it back in there maybe super glue it in place 
and then once you've got it super glued in place you'll be able to reestablish the correct alignment of this uh, this little keyed piece of metal here and then you'll be able to effect the repair that way and uh, when I come back I'm going to show you guys what the repaired version looks like and show you how it operates so first things first I've got to get that little this little pin here Let's see if I can get my pick tool here this little metal pin right here has to line up in that hole right there so uh, using this machinist scribe uh, that's going to make it a little easier for me to do this so um, gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this on video or not basically you're going to apply a little bit of pressure from the top of the uh, piece and then you're just going to kind of lift this and guide it into that hole and well, that's not going to work here. Okay, I have to come at it from a different angle here. <clears throat> this is really easier than it looks. I'm just trying to do this while on camera, so it's making it a little more challenging than it needs to be. But uh, just a little. And there we go. Once that slides in, then uh, you're going to move to this end. And you're going to start to turn this piece until uh, until all of the fabric you know winds back down in. So you're going to turn it in the direction that the uh, that the fabric you know that we wind the fabric. So I'm going to do this here. Really should have uh, gotten myself some kind of a stand for my phone, but anyway. So we're going to turn this. Um, let's see. I've got a pair of pliers here, a pair of needle nose pliers. So we're going to take the needle nose pliers. Now you got to maintain that pressure so that pin doesn't slide out of that hole. And you're just going to turn it like this until all of the fabric rewinds itself. Once the fabric has been rewound, you're going to want to give it a number of additional turns depending on the tension you want to have. Now, I don't think there's any kind of a spec that you could look up and find this. But uh, on the passenger or the driver's side, shade I wound it an additional 10 times after I got the fabric wound in and that that assured me I'd have enough um, I'd have enough tension now notice that I let the let the thing slip out of the needle nose here as long as there's no spring tension on it not a big deal you just drop it and you just pick it back up but if there were spring tension on that I'd have had to start over okay so now the shade is completely wound back into its uh, back into its retracted position. Now I'm going to give it 10 more turns and then I have to figure out how to secure it. Um, actually though, uh, before I do that I need to epoxy one of the, or uh, super glue one of these pieces back in so I have the alignment uh, correct and I can um, go from there. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and come back. Okay, with this piece I chose to super glue back in the piece that has the screw attached to it as opposed to the other side. Um, I don't know if you can see this in here, but uh, with this side right here, I uh, there was a crack in this corner that I had to super glue, so I just globbed a bunch of super glue in there. And then that, it didn't prevent me from super gluing this piece back on, but I just thought that this piece right here uh, was less of a problem. It just looked like it would be easier. Now you can see right here is that flat surface. Right there's a flat surface that the uh, that this piece is going to rest against once I've got the tension on it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wind that up now. I'm not going to do that on camera because uh, it's probably going to be kind of tedious and I'll probably slip a few times and I just don't need to show that on film. Well, I've just taken this piece right here and I've just kind of rested it in there so it's not glued in or anything but it's just showing where this uh, how this piece is kind of sandwiched between those two pieces there. Now what I'm going to do is, this piece is glued down, so this piece isn't going anywhere. I am going to pack that quick steel all into this entire area right here. And it's going to replace this plastic piece, and it's going to secure this up against this other plastic piece. I'm even going to build this up just a little bit into this little crevice. Um, it will fit back into the car. There's not a, you know, there isn't a... Uh, uh, raised piece really that this index is into that I could see so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually hmm now that I think about it 
that steel piece that was left on the car probably fits right into that slot. Let me do a little research before I go packing that in and I will answer that question. Okay, so I've answered the question. Yes, that little plastic groove right there needs to be retained because that is where that metal clip on the door uh, secures into. So that plastic groove and that plastic groove. Now what I'm probably gonna do, that plastic groove there, what I'm probably going to do is um, probably going to press the putty into place and then uh, push that groove in with this machinist scribe here. Uh, and if I don't get it, um, if I don't get it cut out right correctly, uh, then I will probably go ahead and just use a Dremel to clean that up. If I can find a tool that'll fit in that little channel there, or just whittle away at it with an X-Acto knife until I get it close. So this is uh, this is not going to be, you know, the prettiest uh, picture, but it's behind where you can't see it. So. Um, I will show the results, the end results. You can see I've got this little, this little plastic uh, shield on both of these to keep the epoxy from getting into the mechanism here. And, uh, and that's what we're going to go with. So we'll get started. Oh, by the way, the stuff that I used is right here. It's called JB Weld uh, Steel Stick. It's an epoxy putty. Um, and it's, I've used similar product uh, called Quick Steel. And this stuff works. It's... Um, it's going to be far stronger than the original piece. Okay, there it is. Uh, setting up and curing. Once it's cured, I will go ahead and get out my Dremel tool and I will remove all of this excess and trim that down so it's flush with the rest. Uh, here's the other side. As you can see, I tried to show where that groove needs to be. If I need to clean that little groove up a little bit, then I can do that either with the Dremel tool and an X-Acto knife, carve away at it until I get it to look the way it needs to. Okay, here they are, both finished. Like I said, they weren't going to be pretty, but uh, I guarantee you they're going to work. And uh, here, let's see if I can see if I can show, demonstrate the uh, fact that they're going to function. Okay, you pull the screen out, and the screen goes back in on your nice spring tension. So, uh, there you go. If you've got um, over $800 worth of broken window shade, uh, that's your fix. Uh, the JB Weld costs about 6 bucks, and a little bit of super glue, and you're hopefully back in business. I hope this helps somebody.